Pulsating, the energy so strong. Join the movement where dreams belong. From Lagos to Nairobi, hear the call. Skillweed Academy, break down the walls. In the heart of Africa, a flaming night, a rhythm so vibrant. Welcome on board, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. We'll kick off in the next three minutes. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. Let's have fun, folks. It's going to be an amazing time. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you, sir. It was it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll kick up in two minutes. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Pulsating, the energy so strong. Join the movement where dreams belong. Thank you, Toby. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Mitch. Thank you. Break down the walls. In the heart of Africa, a flaming night, a rhythm so vibrant. It sets minds alight. Skill we the academy. We'll lead us upon, embrace the tempo, let your dreams save storm. Rise up, lead us, let the beat guide your way, unlock your potential, seize the day. From the dance floor to the boardroom, let your light shine, shine. Still we have clarity, it's your time. Feel the drums pulsating, the energy so strong. Join the movement where dreams belong. From Lagos to Nairobi. Thank everybody. Let me have a little 30 seconds to go. Let's go, people. Let's go. Let's go. Let the beat guide your way. Unlock your potential. Seize the day. From the dance floor to the boardroom. Let your light shine, shine. Let's go, folks. It'll be a lot of fun tonight. Let's go. Invite others, folks. Let's go. Jump the like button, too. Feel the drums pulsating, the energy so strong. All right. Thank you, everybody. Okay, let's jump in real quick, folks. Let's jump in. All right, thank you, everybody. As always, a delight to be with you all tonight. It's going to be an amazing one, folks. Um, I mean, really, I'm just over, overly joyed and excited to be here tonight. And um, 
one of the things we like to do really as a community is at the end of the day, everything starts and ends with a leadership mindset. All of us are leaders and you have to, we all have to step up to that creed as leaders, really. Leaders in your community, in your homes, in your personal life, whatever it is, really. And one of the things we've seen that is very effective recently is we have a lot of great minds, great leaders in our community and beyond that. Sometimes it's important we hear from them. And tonight we're going to hear from one of those luminaries and great visionaries that are leaders in our community also. And um, really, I'm just super crazily excited on this one. You know, and this is someone I've known for over 20 years. I've, I'm privileged to call her my friend. And, you know, she has a solid passion and love for seeing people develop. And, you know, especially, you know, gender inclusion and everyone to maximize their capacity. And I've seen her stand up and evolve into a very effective, successful leader. You know, she's she's just someone that I think, you know, I've seen her trend in global platforms. I've seen her show solid leadership skills in uh, environment that is predominantly uh, men, really. And I've seen her, you know, shine and stand out. You know, we had the privilege of working together in a global consulting firm. She was a senior director there, and I was head of delivery of operation technology in that same firm. And I've seen the way she handles herself as a professional. She has been a mentor in several areas too. We share mind together, rub mind together. So it's just amazing. Without much shadow, I have the privilege of bringing on stage Sheyi Odewale in the house. Hello, 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 hello. I can, can you All hear right, me? Sheyi. Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Now, Sheyi, you, you know, you, you can't live without one of our traditions we're trying to build is I want to see you just, you know, show some dance move with our, you know, our flagship okay. song right now. Let's see if we can, can give us that. some rock. Let's see if we can do that. Let's let's go. Let's go, Shay. All right. Let's see what you got, Shay. Ooh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Before I go too far, <laughs> I can stand up and start dancing now and forget the presentation. <laughs> Oh my okay. god. Too good, too good, too good acting like. Right, so. Let's go. Woo. 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 Awesome, awesome. Yeah, awesome, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for indulging hey. us. <laughs> of course. Thank you. You guys have a lot of fun. I should come often. Oh man, we please you need to come very often and you know it's a vibrant community. We believe in ourselves. We know at the minimum, all we can do is to help each other to be the best version of ourselves. And, you know, one of our commitment is as much as possible, we're going to bring the best mind in our community to speak to us, inspire us, and show us some of the um, solid things they've done to grow as professionals. And one of the things, Jay, I was thinking about is, and honestly, you came to my mind immediately, you know, we're thinking of so many people, and I said, you know what? Oh, sure. I need to get um, old of Shay. <laughs> and, you know, um, I, I've seen you as a leader. I've seen you grow tremendously. Thank I've you. seen you carry yourself with so much dignity and grace in corporate America with so many leadership um, roles. And I've seen you step up to the creed. I've seen you handle crisis. I've seen you mm -hmm. um, execute and deliver multiple global transformation. So one of the things I said, you know what? Your wisdom and wealth of knowledge. You know, it's important. Um, you know, uh, I have a daughter that is your god daughter, right? She is. And, yes, you she know, is. I, I, and I say yep. to myself, you know what? You know, I wanted to learn from you and say, you know what? If my godmother can do this, um, so can I. She sure can. You know, and um, and I'm challenging everybody on this call. Some of us have daughters, some of us are females, some of our wives and sisters. You know, it's. I, I want you to inspire us to believe and. You know, see us also succeeding. You know, mm -hmm. it takes some level of grit, discipline, focus to get to your level as a professional, really. And I know you were on the client side. You said, hey, okay, don't worry. I'll try and do the meeting anywhere in the office and everything. So thank yes, you for I doing that. Yes, I am right here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I mean, so that's really the mindset, Shay. So I, know, I, I just want to, you know, you, let's have fun together. And thank I will you. just roll it over to you, Shay, and just do your magic. and. Uh, and just take it away from here. 
Awesome. Awesome. Um, thank you, everybody. I know I can't see you all, but I know you're out there. And um, I'll start by saying, Aki and I, as he said, we've been friends for over two decades and we've seen each other from grass to grace and back and forth. And um, I also want to thank him for the opportunity. He does know my heart is to help folks get their best self out there and be the best they can be. And most especially when it comes to women, girls, and um, just folks that you don't normally see in our IT, IT science, STEM field, just the ability to see us do great things. So again, I can ask, thank you so much for your support, your mentorship, your friendship, your kindness, and um, just the best part of things. Can I ask if you can see my screen? Uh, not yet. Let me add it. So now I think I sh we should be able to. Awesome. Awesome. So one of the things I say all the time, and Akin actually, actually likes it. And by the way, I call him Akin Lax, but I will keep it professional and call him Akin. Um, I always say, take it a moment at a time. I tell him all the time. I tell it, I tell myself that all the time. And when he said, oh, talk about leadership mindset, I'm say, I said, oh, it's a daily commitment. But in, re in reality, it's a moment by moment commitment. So that's what, if there's anything you live with, and you take away tonight or this evening, regardless of where you are, is that being a leader, it's a moment by moment commitment. And as we talk tonight, I'll, I'll just tell you more about that. So I'll start by just telling you what's on the docket. I know Akinlax has introduced me, so I don't need to do that much, but I simply go by Shea. It's easy. People call me Shea Butter because it's easier for our North American friends to, to pronounce it that way, but it's as it's pronounced Shea with an H. And what, um, one of the things I want you to go with tonight is as yourself, as you are, where you can start, what success looks like, and um, I will keynote that and say, I'm not defining it for you because you get to do that. And next, of course, what comes next and other tips that I can just talk through. So without much ado about nothing, as you can see, this was a recent photo of me and I said, let's use that. So they know exactly what I look like. I presume I can actually send out the presentation, right? <laughs> yes, I will. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. So where do you start? One of the great things I know about myself, which I had to temper and then grow again was believing in myself. For some wild, awesome reason, I was born an extrovert. I define what it means to like people. Like once you see me, you're like, oh my gosh, this person loves people. So, and to be able to do that, to make friends anywhere you are, I have never seen a stranger. Everyone is a potential friend. You have to have internal confidence. So where do you start is from that internal confidence where you're like, I know I can do it. No one can give you that. So if you don't have that, I, I ask you to find it, whatever it takes. It could be for some people, you're like, I look at myself and I don't see properly. Get glasses. I say that because recently I just started wearing glasses and I was like, oh man, I've been missing a lot for this past few years. So to get more confidence or to get your intern internal confidence, it, you for where you will start in believing yourself, do what you need, because that is the first grain. And the reason I say that is you are all here connecting with Aki, connecting with people. I know you believe you can do it. That's why you're showing up. So I can gladly say you all have it already. Now, what may be stopping you is you might think you need it in boatloads or you need it in this volume or this high, yay big or whatever. No, you just need to know internally it doesn't have to show up to anybody. And next is, where do you start in being a leader? Is one of the things that I'm trying to talk about here is you start with what you know. And what I mean by that is some of you know Excel very well. You can do VLOOKUPs, macros, formulas like that. Lead in that. Take that on. If your office says, hey, we need to do this um, financial statement and we want to do these models grab it. Let them know you for that. And I don't undermine the strength or the excellence it takes to understand Excel. I'm just using it as an example of how bite-sized things can be where your leadership magic is. Or a lot of you are amazingly creative and your best thing to do is gather people socially. Well, do that from where you are. Do that from how you know it. 
Start being a leader in the activity that gathers people socially, leading to what you want to do. Of course, we're talking about STEM here. We're talking about business, IT leaders, and also leaders in a global platform. So all of this bite-sized can lead to all that. Because if you bring the right group of people before, before you, and you start with just using your social skills, which to people might seem minimal, but it's how you start. So start with what you know. And I, I, I use that example expressly because I have heard people talk about networking and they get bugged down. They're like, oh, shoot, if I get to do networking, how do I do it? I don't like, I don't like people. I, I, I'm not sure if I can talk to strangers. I, I'm like, hey, if the bank has your money, you can walk up to the teller and say, here's my purpose. You have my money. So think of the people across the table that are strangers right now as having something as valuable to you as your money. Some can lead to money, but it's not always just about money. But I just use that as something we basically have in common. All of us have to generate income to live the life we live where we live it. So I say, start with what you know, whatever small thing it may be, run with it. Next, set a standard for yourself. This is so critical. The reason I found is, if you don't set a standard for yourself and put a bar for yourself, someone else will. It could be your leader. It could actually even be your colleague. And I go lower because I don't want to say your peer, but mostly your colleague that doesn't even know half what you know, but they'll pull you down because you don't have a bar or a standard you set. And so for you to start, my three main nuggets is believe in yourself, start with what you know, and set the standard. And by that, I, what I mean is, it's a, to put a clarity around it is, if you determine that what works for your life now is your shift at work or your time at what you're doing right now, while still trying to think of what you want to do next, is to go to work seven to three. Do not be bogged down when you're heading out, you've done all your work, you've delivered what you promised based on your role description, you see a colleague sitting there till five. Or you hear from your boss saying, oh, I'm here till six and you don't show up. No, you have to be sure about yourself enough to set that standard and say, I only have this amount of time. Here's what I've promised you to work on. I delivered it in the amount of time I need to. I don't need to follow that set rule that you are putting in. It's usually arbitrary, by the way. Everyone knows most of us do nine to fives or seven to threes or eight, eight hour shifts with our break in between. So when it comes to something like that, that seems simple. It's like, oh, setting the standard at work. But even in your daily, day-to-day -day life, you might have a bunch of friends who their Saturday mornings is spent calling you and chatting and yapping, but you're like, hmm, I need to be creative in what I want to be. My Saturday morning should be studies or at best resting so I can get ready to study in the afternoon. Well, feel free to set that standard and put that boundary. Because in, in, in essence, it's just knowing yourself is where you start. I'll move on and talk about what the success look like because I've realized something very, very clearly in, in the grand scheme of my short life or long life, however you may look at, look at it because I don't know your age demographic, is that success looks different for everyone. And um, Akilax, do you want to say something? Sorry, I just saw you pop up. Um, no. Oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> Okay. It is fun to see you pop up too, though. I, I am a yapper, but I just wanted to be sure I was going well. Okay. So for me, one of the things that I realized about defining success was over the course of time, I used to think it looked how people showed it to me. Same thing ties back to standard, right? Well, I didn't set what that looked like. So for a while, and not a short while, I was wavering in, oh, success looks like making it to manager. And then I get there and I'm like, oh, but someone else is senior manager. And just giving you a sampling of my life, right? And then I'm like, oh no, it's making it to partner, but someone else is managing partner. After a while, I realized that, you know what, Shay, what the success look like for you? You need to define that because there's always someone far better at something you think you're great at. There's always someone moving ahead faster or even slower. That, that those people also give you pressure because they're like, oh my gosh, why am I putting so much on myself? Look at this person. They're not going that fast and they're happier. So you have to define what success looks like for yourself. And that's what success is for you. 
our successes look differently, attack differently, and should be measured internally. The same way, it all goes back to that internal confidence, internal messaging you give yourself. Be your own best friend when you're defining your success because you're the best at it. You know yourself. Now, an example of things that I know tag to success is when things go wrong. We all get fearful. We're like, oh, what if this goes wrong? What if that goes wrong? Um, or even if it does go wrong, does that mean I'm a failure? Not at all. Failure is an exercise in getting to success. It's not even just a joke, it's the facts. No one can tell you better about being a great teacher or a great, a great professor than a professor who's gone into class and his studies fell flat. And he went back and said, okay, the way I'm teaching this calculus is not working for my students. Or the way I'm teaching this language, it could be a French class, is not working for my students. So I need to redefine it and ch change it properly. Same thing goes with when you think things will go wrong, even when they are not wrong, your insides feel like they are. And so it's one of those things that you have to really tell yourself, what if it goes right? And I'm not trying to be this motivational speaker, always positive, no, 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 kind of, no, that's not what I'm trying to do here. What I'm trying to do here is have you celebrate the fact that it could go right, because it does. It does get right. I have no doubt about it. I have lived through it. I see Akilak's life all the time. He's living it. And he's always go it, it, like from one wrong to right and right and right and wrong. Like it's like almost like sometimes you're like, did anything really go wrong? You forget because when things go right, it makes it all worth it because the lessons are so enriched in you that you, you, you have no doubt that success looks beautiful. And then, of course, when I think of what success looks like, it looks like starting today. You have to make each moment count. I don't know about you, but this is the youngest we'll ever be. And you cannot get, uh, I'm in Mountain Standard Time, so 6.25 p.m. on April 11, 2024 has come and is going right now. It's gone. That's it. So each moment has to count. And whatever you use that moment to do is what leads you to success. And, and I know since time is the one resource that we all can make more of, we need to start today. If there's, I, I know I just said, I said earlier, if there's anything that you picked today and, and I mentioned it, but I want to say that if there's one encouragement I can give you today is to start your leadership journey or do something to empower it today. Not tomorrow, not a moment after today, but this moment. Just because for the re simple reason of the fact that when you do it, it lets you know that, oh, if I've won that moment by moment and each moment has passed, I can win the next. And you look down the line, it's two decades and more. And you're like, wow, that was a good journey. So leaving you with that, I like to say, definitely you define success. Try to stay on the track that what if it goes right? Yes, we can be a critic and go, what if it goes wrong? Do that exercise, but always come back to what if it goes right and give yourself way more reasons on the balance sheet of it going right. So if you're putting in one for if it goes wrong, try to put two for right. Because by the time you see how it's beneficial to be a leader and how it's great to be a successful leader, you'll be like, you know what? Let's, let's run this journey, let's keep going. And of course, definitely start now, start today. Make each moment count. Without um, much ado about anything, I know I've, I've kind of led into this, but one of the places that I've found is when, when I hear a keynote or I hear someone talk about things, I like to have practical what comes next. So I wanted to tell you what comes next in almost like a broad, but yet slim context, okay? Run with this urge. There's an urge that has you here this evening listening to us talk, right? It, it, it's an urge that is nudging you to say, you can be a leader, you can be better, you can be greater. So run with it, don't stall. Don't let um, what they call self-doubt 
or people who also know it as imposter syndrome stop you. I actually think that term has caused a little bit of more harm than good. People were trying to identify something, so then they gave it a name and called it imposter syndrome. But what that did is folks who don't even understand what that is, use it as an excuse. They're like, well, maybe I shouldn't be here. I'm an imposter. You know, maybe I shouldn't be here. And your self-doubt, you know, those two angels on your shoulder, like the the uh, dark angel and the light angel that tell you things, they started leaning into it and say, well, well, this could just be imposter syndrome and I don't have to do it. Everybody has it. It's okay. No, run with the urge that has you here this evening, the urge that has you wanting to be a leader, wanting to make a difference in our community and globally and worldwide. Run with that urge, do not stall. Next is determine your path. I talked earlier on about how you have to set your standard. That's leading to your path. Because when you set your standard and you realize, hey, you know what? I'm a morning person. I want to give my best hours of my morning to my creative self, to my thought leadership, to the things I want to do. Then you pattern your life around, you know what? Maybe I'll have my friend drop up my kid, carpool in the morning, and then I will pick up in the evening. Or, or you might say, oh, you know what? I might decide now that here's where we're going to live. So we're so way closer to schools. I don't have to spend a long time in commute. Determine your path and enjoy being alone. This is funny coming from an extrovert who gets energy from people who enjoys people, like people are my it, but you also have to enjoy being alone. And the reason I say that is no matter what I tell you today, your internal voice and your internal learning is what's going to have to run with it. And that's just you. You can have your spouse, your friends, your pastor, your um, imam, all your Buddhist leaders, you can have them all tell you all they want, but that internal voice that is put in you by our creator has to be what speaks the most. Because whether you're high up on success or you feel you're in the journey with failure, misery, or whatever it is, you still have to sleep with yourself and stay with yourself and do things alone. And so those thoughts that come to you, you have to learn to celebrate them and enjoy them. You have to be able to say, you know what? So what that went awry or so what it went well. Because also sometimes even in our successes, we get anxiety. You're like, oh my gosh, you know, I know it's going well now, but maybe along the line in two days, they might tell me, oh gosh, you're not cutting it anymore. And this is a high time. And yet those anxiety are coming, but you have to enjoy being alone on your path, running alone and telling yourself the good things you need to hear. Now, if you find yourself not doing that, don't stall. You just have to find a way, as someone said it, is change the CD playing. So you might have some CDs that are telling you you can't cut it. Or better yet, if you cut it, someone is going to come take it from you. There's someone always younger, richer, better, more pretty, more taller, more diverse. You know, they are a mix of four continents. Nope. You have to enjoy being able to change that CD and say, I am Shay. I am made for such a time as this. For this moment, I am victorious. I will be able to set the path right. Even when things have gone wrong in the past, you look at your victories, I have been able to turn it around. So keep talking to yourself and enjoying that. And then overall, just re realizing that when you conquer that, you get to the next part, which is success, success attracts. It does. People will find you. You will be shocked how much your success attracts others to you. Now, there's a, what I want to call a distraction factor in that as well, or even not even a distraction factor, a believing your own hype factor, which is totally good, but don't get distracted by it. Don't stop working on yourself. Don't stop staying on your path. Don't stop doing great internal confidence growth. Do not in any way, shape or form, stop enjoying being by yourself. Because the same way the success attracts great people that will be your friend, your sponsor. I always tell people, a lot of people will sponsor someone who's successful. And what I mean by that is they say, oh, she ran this program, ran it so well, even during COVID. You know what? We're going to bring her on the next one, even when you're not in the room. And that's no word of a lie, right? They will do that. 
and it'll attract those people too but it'll also attract those who say yeah but it wasn't a big deal she just knew people or she had the right team around her who want to discount that do not be distracted by either of those hypes the fact of the matter is if you steal each moment and grab it and own it and use it when the whole bucket of it is done you'll there'll be no regrets you will have this great urge to say you know what yeah that was good and that's in my opinion the best things it's not the money it's not the luxurious things it's not even the hype of people it's the ability to look yourself in the eye and say that was good i did good so now when i want to tie it all together i'll go straight forward and say additional tips that i can give you is definitely seek feedback and not in the way of saying oh tell me if i did good no more like in the way of looking at the person across the table and say if you were me and you were doing what i did what else would you do or or better yet um here's uh, you know this particular focus area in my leadership journey that i want to talk about i want to do things with i want to be able to, to be excited about can you give me feedback as to how to do it better how to do it faster how to understand what it means you know if you were me again how would you do it not expecting that they're going to elevate your confidence or reduce it again that internal confidence is yours to own you cannot let someone who cuts you off on the highway mess up your commute to work right that's just that's just what it means when you let someone's feedback however constructive or destructive or un unhelpful it is change your course and change your, you own that also take a time to reflect reflect on your performance reflect on your deliverables your first um for example your first podcast it probably might be you rambling on to just 10 clicks if that's what you want to do by the way you know if you want to be one who does podcasts or one who wants to lead by doing an IT project your first IT project you might end up being rolled off after 3 days they might say oh she didn't even communicate with the stakeholders that we needed her to report to you know reflect on that own it own your part and keep going of course the biggest and the greatest part that i think i have been so blessed to learn from is exploring new ways of doing things there's no no one way that is the right way there's no one way that's the only way we've just seen the world change before our eyes i tell people as a gen xer i feel so blessed to be like one of the first two were in this world of you know hey cell phones and all that big um streaming giants like when i started netflix do not laugh they were sending cd's in that red envelope i just aged myself and now we're all saying netflix is a streaming giant so you know they explored new ways to do things and we're living through it so as a gen x it comes easy with, for me to change and to move on because we've had to now when this big era of ai that is stretching my leadership journey a different way I literally do not have an HR group in my company anymore. Like if you need anything like a letter of verification, you ask HR. That's the but. So I have to be ready to include that in my project planning, in my understanding of what my people's needs are and how I adapt. One of the things you have to do is set those those personal goals and be accountable. And you have to be accountable to yourself. Now, yes, you it's good to have an accountability partner. I hear that all the time. It helps a lot of people. It's good to have friends that reach in and say, "Hey, you did say you were going to do this January. Now it's June. What are you doing?" But you set those goals for yourself. You know the full story of yourself, no matter how much you try. So best is hold yourself accountable, so you can look yourself in the mirror moment by moment. Do not spend all the time in the mirror that's vanity but you know moment by moment and say i did my best and then of course you do it again start from the beginning iterate adapt and keep going again over and over and over it sounds odious it sounds cumbersome but people talk about the 10000 hour rule something you do for 10000 hours that becomes second nature muscle memory you're tracking your brain to think that way i think that is so true like the first time things go awry it's human it's so right to sit in it but let the next time you sit in it be shorter and shorter and before you know it you're a go getter within 5 minutes you're like yeah we can change that turn that around and you keep on moving so those for me are what it means to show up to have a leadership mindset 
and to commit to a moment by moment victory. And again, thank you so much for listening. I will turn it over to Q&A right now. Excellent. Thank you so much, Shay. And I think thank everybody you. has been looking forward to this part of it. And um, the floor is open, everybody. Let's ask questions. Um, Shay has been in leadership role for many years. And I would like, uh, you know, uh, our team to ask questions, our female audience ask questions, because one of the things, and Shay, I can preempt some of the questions I've seen of people course. ask in general. So what would you say to somebody, a, you know, um, a female in our community that says, you know what, um, it just never occurred to me I could be in leadership. How do you, you know, change my thinking to embrace leadership in general? Our community is great for one thing. Our girls, we end up having like, maybe the firstborn is a girl or you have a girl in the middle and she's running the household. That's leadership right there. You think it's easy to get like six of your siblings or three of your siblings, if you're just four, into the car and say, let's go to the market <laughs> or let's go grocery shopping together and come back without killing each other? No. But ladies, we do it all the time. We run households. That is project management. You have the budget, the resources, and the scope for the household every month. So when I see females and I see them able to do that, or when I see mothers, oh, my mind is always blown. I'm like, are you kidding me? You are raising the next generation and you tell me you can't be a leader? We are just babies on the inside. Yes, we're grown Ooh. adults, but treat us like you're, not like your child, don't say cuckoo. No, no, don't talk to us like that, but treat us like that. Thank you so much, Dilzian. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for listening. So please, when, how I change their mind is think of where you're good at, which is why I said start with what you know. If you're a mother and you've raised or are just birthing, like it doesn't matter. You're going to raise. You've planned for that kid. That's leadership. Make it your baby. They're okay. portable skills we all have. And if you're a teacher, even more the better. You have a whole classroom of people. That's leadership Amazing. right there. Amazing. Um, Shay, what about um, someone that says, okay, I'm a little bit nervous to, because of the perception that, you know, managing crisis. So if um, a female, how do I, you know, kind of, I'm, I'm thrown to crisis management. So what would you say to me? I'm, I'm scared of being confrontational. I don't want to be tagged as a angry female. And angry a lot of people, female. yeah. <laughs> That yeah. is one of the coolest tropes. And it's so funny, I own it, actually. I own it. Because most people that meet me, they meet the smiley shade, right? Yeah. And then things happen, and I'm like, are you for real? Then I flip the script. And so when they want to throw the angry black female trope, I'm like, can you look at me as a whole picture? You've met me, I don't know, 10 days ago, 74 days ago, whatever the length of time. Then today, I get angry. That's an extent of an emotion. It's okay yeah. to be angry. When you're passionate about your eight hours or 12 hours at work, and because this is mostly in the work context, right? Like, are you serious? Being the angry person shows you I have passion. And if I use the angry energy to be creative in my solution for the problem, brother, sister, you got to keep quiet. So I own that trope. I let people know. I'm like, look at the full shayi. And if you still conclude with the fact that in spite of how much I have given and how much I am to you and this moment happened or this moment, because you can get angry multiple times, then that's a you problem. As someone would say, that's an issue, not an issue me. Got so it. you are the one with the issues. So that's Got how it. I own it. Thank you, Shay. All right. Somebody said, um, you know, please, how can I have an authority mindset leading to leadership mindset? You know, if you want to share some war story. So to have that authority, okay. you know, yes, you know, there are... Ooh. Yeah. yeah, I love um, there's this book from uh, John. Oh, I'm trying to remember his last name, but it's the 360 manager. So you're the middle manager, right? The people below you and the people above you. So I can't remember the author's name. It'll come to me. John Maxwell. Yeah. So when you talk about authority, it's really almost like it's synonymous with influence. You have to know that people will let you influence them if they know it works well for one for them, like it benefits them. Let me give you an example. So I, I came into my current firm as an experienced hire, right? After so long of work and everything. 
And then just as I came in, it's a big global firm, so busy, there's a lot going on. I was told there's a project in trouble. Hmm. And I was like, oh yeah, put me on it, I'll do it. Like Akilax was one of the people I, I, I had ideas and stories about like, what, how do I do this, how do I do that? And when someone talked to me about it and she said, here are the problems, what are you gonna do? And I told her, and one thing she told me, Diane was like, oh Sheyi, how do you feel about it? I was like, no, 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 we can't talk feelings here. You need this done, give it to me, let's do it. She was crestfallen because she's one of the folks that believe, oh, you should say things like, oh, I'm excited. Oh, I'm this, this, this. But I'm like, no, no, no. You've just told me 10 problems and you hadn't it over to me. There's, I'm anx there's anxiety, there's excitement, there's fear, there's all that. But I don't want to dump that on you. So just yeah. ignore my feelings. Give me the problem. You want the problem solved, right? That's it. Mm -hmm. So she was not happy with my response. But I went and I fixed the problem. Mm -hmm. I got it done in multiple ways. Like I said, external help, things like that, right? Finally, she one day told me, she said, I really didn't like your answer, but I love your results. Wow. So love I was it. like, hey, Dion, good for you, because I wasn't looking at you. But <laughs> hey, you can't. You have to own it. Is okay. that, again, internal confidence. Authority mindset, people will follow success. So have that internal confidence to know that I will be successful because you've done it before. And if the only thing you've done, I will go back to my growing up in the Nigerian system boarding house. If the only thing you've done successful is get water from the borehole to the hostel, you've done something successful in your life. <laughs> That's so a good own it. it. Thank you oh, so I, much. I go as much as I can. Okay. Another one is, um, what's your leadership style like, Shay? So... It, it, and I know the textbooks that tell you all the different ones, authoritative, commanding, um, people pleaser, da, 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 da. I think my biggest strength is people. I absolutely adore people. Like, again, I've never met a stranger. I just, you know. So what, yeah, what I do, my leadership style is, what does the moment call for? Mm. For example, I've had clients like, they know nothing but they act like the world falls on their shoulder. So I'm like, you know what? I can't go word for word, toe to toe, you're paying the bills. And I am in the consulting field, so I apologize for using just clients. But the style I used in that area was, you know what, come with me, let's go for a walk. Let's talk about it. We're walking side by side, we have another activity. Mm. And then I'm saying, I'm chiming in, in their mind, they're just registering what I'm saying. We're walking, so that, that they have to also do their motion and do all that. And in the end, they're like, you have a point. And, the, and I've had clients who are like, okay, Shay, you tell me what to do. You tell me what to do. In that one, I have to make sure my integrity is sound. Because if I lead them right or wrong, they will say, Shay, you led us. So my leadership style is adaptive, adaptiveness. I have to be mm -hmm. adaptive. I've never seen one thing be the same. Even if they call the same project, say it's an SAP project, it's an yeah. SAP upgrade. It's never been the same. That's the leadership style that has worked with me. Perfect. But of course, you have to pick the one that works with you. I'm also a talker, so I will find illustrations from the best or worst places. <laughs> <laughs> so Shayi, there's another question that came that I think it's quite interesting. It says, if there's a setback on you know, how can you as a leader adjust and get back on track? So, you know, maybe project setback, it which is typical, there are issues or there's a project in crisis similar to the one when you joined um, the new firm. <laughs> oh, oh, my current one? <laughs> yeah. I tell people, I'm like, it is not even funny how much I think I've got a repetition for it. If it's in trouble, send her there. Or if it's about to get into hell, send her there. I don't know, but there, currently now I'm in a project four months in and we cannot agree on an integrated plan. And what I mean by that is every arm of the project. So success so factors, s 4 data, we can't agree on an integrated plan. So we're running a project. We know our go live date, but we still don't know the intermediate milestones. Mm. So it feels like every week I'm going back to the circle, to the leaders to say, I take it back. I thought I had a plan. I'm falling on my sword. How can you adjust? Be humble. I don't go mm. home thinking, oh, I failed again. I know it's four months and you guys are laughing because they're like, how do you not have a program plan four months into a project? Hey, I'm not the only one running the project. 
I do not own it. I own my part of it. I own the fact that I make sure every day my part that needs to change to adjust to a new person starts, changes and adjusts. But taking it back on track, you have to look at all your resources. And since I have four, uh, five SIs, so SAP is part of it. SAP, we pro essential ourselves and stuff. I'm like, I, I, you can't own what's not yours. So as a leader, how do you adjust? Hey, you take it off and you come back the next day. Got it. So another question, Jay, is um, what's your take on mentorship? I know sometimes mentorship can be messy <laughs> because it's a lot of work. What's your take on mentorship? Yeah. And this might, this might be where we di- we, we're, we're going to differ. <laughs> I do not like the word mentor. Okay. <laughs> I told people, I'm like, don't teach me anything. Sponsor me. Speak okay. about me in a great way where I'm not. In the rooms I can't get to. Say Sheyi is an amazing leader. Sheyi is awesome in delivering whatever is given to her. Sheyi's authority goes far. And that's because I'm speaking over 20 years of experience and I've had a lot of mentors and they'll probably be disappointed if I'm saying, oh, I still need you to teach me, mentor me, more like sponsor me at this level. And I also noticed with us in our community, we don't get a lot of sponsors. There's not a lot of people in the boardrooms sitting Mm. down saying, Bring Akin, Akin on. You know? Yeah. So my thought about mentorship is call it more like sponsorship and friendship. Yes, you might be mentoring the person. You might be teaching them stuff. But also be remembering them when you're talking about places that they may need to get to. Hmm. And that. vice versa, expect that of your mentors too. It's not a one-way se- s- street. It's a bi-directional street. So if you have people above you who do things better, sponsor them even in your own lowly place. That's mm. how we get to have our names read and said and pronounced in rooms that we're not in. So I know I know mentorship and having a buddy and all that, there's a big benefit to it, but I think we've come to a place where we have to shift it to sponsorship. Got it. And one of the things I, you know, uh, Shay, that, that's an amazing point because at the end of the day, and I, I think we should challenge ourselves as a community to say, a lot of us have to be in some leadership capacity. And I'll tell you one thing. Um, one of my roles in the past, I was privileged to make hiring decisions. And there was an instance within a year that five African names in this case, you know, came to my table. And your guess is as good as Evan and L that I have to, if they are competent and they are in front of me, mostly it even came from other sources. It's an easy hire, right? So the yep. question is, you know, in my mind, if you don't have leaders that can actually be there for you to make a decision, you know, then um, you're not, yeah. at some Again. point you're, you're just going to, you're going to suffer really as a community also. So it's important. You're sponsoring, to, you are sponsoring yeah. them. Yeah. They might absolutely. never know. Yeah. I can tell you an example right now. I have a, uh, and sorry to cut you off, but it just came to mind and I thought it was a beautiful story. So I have a group of people I call associates. They're the first level of the company analysts in some companies. They just started out. And I told the client, I said, you got to give me money to bring on associates. Like there's no point me putting this program on my resume without growing other people. I don't need another program to prove I can do what I can do. So then I got six associates, right? And one of them was just not going to work out because it's surfing the net instead of focusing on the meeting. But there was another one who was panicky. She is Nigerian descent, Yoruba. And she was like, on her notes, she wrote, God, please help me. And someone took a screenshot and let us know she's not competent. I said, do not touch her. Do not move her. I even went on vacation for a week and I said, I am coming back to fix this. I can't fix this now because I'm on my way to the airport, but do not touch her. And then I got back and I was like, okay, what are her skills? She went to school for finance. She's good at scribing. She's good at this. Got another role. Fast forward six weeks later, I get an email from a client. Sharon is amazing. Done this, da, 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 da. And wow. if you know how I felt like her mom, amazing. I sent it to her leader. I sent it to the leaders of the project. They thanked her. I, you would think she built a bridge in the Sahara <laughs> Desert. I love it. I love it. That's 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 my job right now. Like I'm like I, again, I don't need any more to pad my resume. So love it, yeah, love it, love it. And she, you know, this is why. I mean, I, I'm just ooh, this is so natural for you. I mean, and and that's why you know, as a community, I challenge us all. Yeah, it's not just 
being a leader because you want to just be a leader. Okay. Think about the opportunity it brings to the larger okay. community. It's yeah. a big deal. So and if, amazing. if it gives dividends. Yes. She thinks I walk on water and I'm like, I am only human girl. Jesus is who worked on water. So no, <laughs> but, and she doesn't even know what I did, but she kind of sees the dividends of it. And she's like, wow. only you, Shay. you were the, I'm like, Hey, as long as you're doing good, you have my full support. And it all started with, I saw her Yoruba name and I'm like, yeah, this one will not look for, she's right out of school. She's coming right into my project. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Okay. Let me ask you, Shay. Yes. How do you address the um, sometimes the subtle mediocrity you might sense in you know <laughs> some folks, and you know because you know this is serious business for us really because we make hiring firing decision too at That's some point, true. and um, it's sad but sometimes you have to make those tough decisions. So what do you say to our community to say you know what this is serious business we don't take mediocrity this is serious stuff. Yeah. You know, in the scheme of things, it's business. So what do you say in terms of encouraging folks to put the work, put the discipline, put the, you know, um, the grind? And, um, you know, let's your name also speak for the next person coming. So what what's your I take on that? that? Yeah. You know, when I talked about setting standards in the beginning, that's yeah. what I was alluding to. Because yeah. I promise you this, just as I've seen a lot of us knock it out of the park oh boy have i seen a number of us i'm like you know they don't expect so much of us like what are you doing yeah am i quick to feel the shame and put it on myself yes because we're all from the same community it's easy to do but then i shake it off i go back to the standards i've set for myself and face it and then i do the needful including i call it releasing them to their greatness yeah i really literally Call, tell people that uh, not trying to be a motivational speaker when you're laying off or you're releasing them from the project because sometimes like, yeah. the layoff starts with you rolling out more, and then the HR takes over I say I'm releasing you to your greatness because it can't be found here and I know everyone has greatness in them love it love it yeah and you know that's a tough one and we as it leaders is. sometimes would have to make those tough choices at times so oh, gosh, you know yes. uh, uh, the challenge to us as a community is you know make sure your name opens the door for the next person too. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, put the work, put the discipline, um, no mediocrity, put excellence and pride in your work also. All right, we got another question from one of our buddies, Mr. Dolly P in the house. The local hey, Mr. Dolly P. Oh, oh, we love you. Love you. <laughs> love you. <laughs> Everyone, give us a moment. This is, this is one of my heroes. <laughs> He's amazing. <laughs> so the, oh, the last the one question one. is, yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay. Again, I'm not going to say what's popular. So please, everyone, don't come for me, okay? Do not dox me. But d and is a sham. Like, every company looks at diversity and they say, as long as you look different or you have a subtle accent. Oh, are you from Australia? Or are you, you know, or you're female, you know? And then I'm like, what about equity? What about inclusion? I know people talk about equity, but they mean equality of out outcomes. I cannot tell you how much I tell people, you cannot guarantee, guarantee equality of out outcomes. I have started out with people, they've put in their best and we're not in the same place. Some are higher, some are lower. So when we use equity to mean all of us have to look the same and have the same values and the same um, successes, it's not fair. And then of course, inclusion, you're only as included as much as you blend with the picture and what i mean by that is speak a certain way act a certain way the better you do that the more you're put together so when people sit, talk about de and i and they they talk about it in the public general sense of oh we must see more black women in leadership we must see more women on the board we must see what i'm like hey hey hold up a second we're still here to make money in the grassroots of things my business doesn't need to have 10 board members as long as the dividend that comes into my pocket is ten dollars more than last year's i don't want to know if it's a female or a guy at the boardroom that's not the job of the business is what i'm trying to say mm. now when you look at around and you go to a school and you see students don't block some because they don't look like you that is the job of the hiring manager that i get but mm. again i also don't want your handout because i look a certain way and you want to put me on a placard or in a catalog they're like, oh, we got a black African immigrant. 
who is now on the board. I, I don't, anybody got time for that. So my take on it is that it made some people a lot of money. They were looking for something to be angry about. They did it well. And I have companies, I will, I'll not name names, who said, hey, we spent the 200 million we said we would on the DNI. We're rolling it back now. Uh -huh. or we're, we're back to where we started. So we won nothing. Well, but one by one, day by day, like Akilak said, we can hire the people. Thank we can you so hire much. The right people. We can we can change it one at a time. I, I knew Dolakpo was gonna throw some tough one on you. Guys. Dolly P, we gotta <laughs> catch up, buddy. <laughs> oh man, uh, we've known each other for over twenty years with Dolly P. In and the, when, I when remember those Friday nights. Yeah, we had I know. good Friday night Saturday it's night church chats. Yeah. Look at us now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Thank there's another question. Um, as a leader, your team is struggling to complete delegated tasks. How can you ensure everyone is on the same page? Oh man, that's a day-to-day -day <laughs> thing. We're always struggling to complete tasks. <laughs> You're a teacher, a nurse, a mom, or okay, let me not even yeah. use that. A dad, you know, yeah. a friend, uh, a therapist. Right, like yeah. I've had people come to my office to cry, right, and and sometimes they they have no control over it, but they just need to cry. So you give them a glass of water and a hug. <laughs> so how do I how do I ensure we're on the same page? I have to be crisp in my communication, and be clear in what I expect. Now, if they can't commit complete the task, I have to ask myself this question: Do I have the right people in the right task? Hmm. Like we are not all Excel gurus, and we definitely are not all great at PowerPoints. Like I can steal a template like no man's business. Wake me up in the middle of the night, I will find the template for the best thing. But ask me to create a template. I'm like, brother and sister in the Lord. That is why Microsoft has templates. <laughs> so if I, if I if someone like me is now put in a place to create a template, I'm gonna fail at it. So if my leader does that to me, the, the tasks won't get done. But Thank if I have you. someone who's great at Excel and I have them doing the modeling. And I, I'm clear in what I want to see in the models, then we're good. Thank you but so much, Shay. It's a day to day, it's a day to day um, grind. Thank you. Thank good you. Question. And I know we have three more minutes. And um, thank you, everybody. Oh, yeah. You all are awesome. Do um, we get you know, to dance out? Oh, yeah. We're going to dance out in a bit. And okay. Shay, can, can you type out? Uh, let me copy Shay's um, LinkedIn. You guys can follow Shay on LinkedIn. Yes. Um, she's an excellent resource for you to just make sure you tap into a wealth of knowledge and experience. And you can check out on LinkedIn, Shea Dewali, and I'll probably send the um, a LinkedIn profile handle to the larger community also. For and sure. some of you yeah. have pinged me and said, um, you know, si si okay, please do us a favor, like, like, like the button, folks. You know, she has been awesome. Give us some like, like, like us on YouTube. <laughs> Like us on YouTube so that more people get to see what we are doing. And I can see a question about um, the Skill with program coming up. Yes, we have a program on the um, 27th of April. And uh, we are partners with CompTIA. So, yes, we will be doing the Security Plus. More to come so, from that. So oh, far. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Shay. We have a, we are partner with CompTIA, and we are also doing a mentorship program. I saw program. that. Yeah. I saw the post. I'm so bad on social media, but I did see it. <laughs> I did see it. I think it was on Facebook. I barely yes. go on that, but I saw it. So yeah, great thank job. You so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, you know, before we go, we will still dance out and um, have That's fun. Right. And you know, folks, let's give Shay some love. This is great. Honestly, I mean, I'm just excited. And um, I'm going to post it to our, it's going to be on our YouTube page so you all can listen. To, believe it or not, Shay, I have two of my back and, the, you know, back and front field with your, um, wow. with with everything wow. I took from this, really. It's amazing. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. You. I appreciate that is, it. That is, that, that feels yeah. good. It makes, yeah. it, uh, makes it, it this was... a win for today. I want <laughs> the moment and I want the day. So Thank you. You did, sure. All right, we're going to dance out. Everybody on the call, we yes. are going to dance out before we go. Let's go. I love the theme song, man. <laughs> Thank you, Shayata. Thank you, everybody. You all are awesome. Thanks for being part of our community. Let's keep doing great things together. And, you know, always remember impossible is nothing. 
don't let anybody hold you back if you have a dream go for it no limitation you don't do that yet no limitation of folks let's go let's go thank you everybody god bless enjoy this thank evening. you all. enjoy the weekend shayata you're the best love from here <laughs> love from here thank you thank you thank you. Awesome. thank you thanks for having thank me so thank, thank you. you so much and dolly p <laughs> dolly p in the house <laughs> Thank you Shay, thank you so much Shay. I appreciate right. you. Take care. Good Bye. night everybody. God bless. Take care. Feel the drums pulsating, the energy so strong. Join the movement where dreams belong. From Lagos to Nairobi, hear the call. Skill with Academy. Break down the walls in the heart of Africa. A flame ignites, a rhythm so vibrant. It sets minds alight. Skill with Academy, we're leaders of all. Embrace the tempo, let your dreams take storm. Rise up, leaders, let the beat guide your way. Unlock your potential. Seize the day From the dance floor to the boardroom Let your light shine, shine Still we have carry It's your time Feel the drums pulsating The energy so strong Join the movement Where dreams belong From Lagos to Nairobi Hear the call Still we have carry Break down the wall Rise up, beat us, let the beat guide your way. Unlock your potential, seize the day. From the dance floor to the boardroom, let your light shine, shine. Still we have carry, it's your time. Oh. The drums pulsating, the energy so strong. Join the movement where dreams belong.